some years ago, I did something that I'm pretty sure many of you also did. I moved from the village to the city. From a ground covered in soil to floor covered in concrete. Where I grew up, we had a really nice garden and of course a compost. So after a while living in the city, I started to ask myself what to do with daily organic waste, which coffee ground, vegetable peels, eggshells and so on. I did some research, some handcrafting, and I got my first compost worms. After some experiments and a bit of time, I had a working system on my balcony, which if I could recycle my organic waste. And then when I, for the first time, used the worm poop, the worm excrements, to grow some plants, some vegetables, some herbs on my balcony, I knew I found an idea worth spreading. Luckily, uh, some guys also had the same idea. We found each other, and today we, we are a startup. We are the team warm up. Our vision is that we want to show that organic waste is no longer referred to as waste. We want to show that everyone can explode it by itself. And now I'd like to show you why this process is so amazing and also a lot of fun. These are seven days. It's a time loop. It's easy, degradable material, but I promise it's not a fake. In this process, the material is being reduced by up to 95% of its volume. And the best thing is, it doesn't smell. Later, I will explain why. But before, I'd like to talk about the background of organic material. The problem with organic material is that mostly it ends up in the usual trash. And this is something that I call a negative domino effect starts with. So worldwide, up to 50% of the trash is organic material. Just the organic material which ends up in Swiss household trash fills up a truck line in one year from Basel to Chiasso. And overall, this means a lot of transportation energy. Usually, this trash is carried outside to the cities, to landfills. Switzerland, with their incineration plants, is our exception. But in both ways, the bounded nutrients and the complex organic compounds are being lost forever. Later in the landfill, this trash is covered by other trash, which cuts off the oxygen and finally results in methane gas which is a 23 times stronger climate gas than CO2. And just this direct effect in the landfills is responsible for about 3% of total greenhouse gas emission, and they're so also responsible for climate change. In order to compensate this loss, people use synthetic fertilizer to grow plants and food. This means negative environmental impacts and toxification of the soils and the ecosystems. And this is a practice which is just crazy. I mean, val valuable resources are being destroyed day by day to replace them by insufficient, expensive and harmful products. And not to mention about the tomatoes from today without any taste and all the agroworkers which have to deal with those chemicals. So I think we need soils, and not oil, and not chemical. Because the soils are the most amazing and most diverse ecosystem on our planet. We still don't really good understand how they work. But we know that the organic matter in the soils is something very important. Today's practices are ending up in soils poor of organic material. But the increase would be a simple way to bound huge amount of CO2 from the atmosphere. There are many more examples, but just one more, and especially if we think about weather extremes. 
stabilized organic matter works like a sponge in the soil. And I'm talking about 800,000 liters of water, which one hectare, what is 100 to 100 meter, can hold back with a content of around 5% organic material in the soil. And this prevents erosion, floatings, and the drying out of the soil. So to get to this point, we think we need to work with cycles, like nature. So think about uh, a forest, a tropical rainforest. The biomass production there is huge. Without fertilizer, without chemicals, because everything is in a cycle. When a leaf is falling down, it's being proceeded in the place where it arrives, right under the tree, in the floor, in the soil. And after that process, the nutrients are plant available again, and life can keep on going in peace. So, but as I mentioned in the beginning, today many people live in urban areas, like 70% in areas where soil is sealed. So what we want to do is, we want to bring this cycle into the urban areas. And as the earth form taken leading role in the natural bioconversation, we want to use this amazing creature to reach this goal. So composting with worms works a bit different than usual composting. One amazing thing is that the worms do the work, so it's less work for us. Um, yeah, the worms are they're like, they're like pets. You have to treat them well. But it's not so much work. If you go to holiday, it doesn't matter. They can stay for some weeks alone at home. <laughs> you will need some time to get used to that system. But after a while, it will become as normal as paper or glass collection. Even it's less work and it's fun and you get some benefits from it. So to start, you can take almost any kind of bin. It works in small and large scale. So this sketch here shows a multi-layer system, the one we are working with. And now I will go step by step through how it works. So step one, prepare a coffee. Step two, take the coffee ground and put it into the bin. Step three, close the bin with the cover, because the worms don't like light. And as I told you, the worms will do the work. They take over the next steps. Inside the bin, they're moving around all that material. And with that, some oxygen comes to all little parts of the material, what is very important for the process. Then the microorganisms are starting to eat this food. And then some, something appears which you probably all know. Some slimy, stinky stuff. If you think about some vegetable that you once forgot somewhere. And this slimy, stinky stuff is the food from the worms. And because they are eaten right away, this process is without smell. And the really amazing thing then happened inside the worm, in the digestive tract. Inside the worm, it's a biotechnology with a proven concept of millions of years. It's a biotechnology which humans are just dreaming to be able copying it. And finally, what leaves the worm, the worm excrements, is humus, the fundament of our life. Because without plants, and the humus is the fundament from the plants, we wouldn't survive, I guess, no? And also without worms, without bees, without all that animals. And therefore, I think we need to work with them and not to kill them with chemicals. So the last step is your part again. As you see here, it's finished, proceeded material. The worms, they move to the fresh trash. So like four times a year, you can harvest this wonder of nature and use it to grow healthy and strong plants. And after that, you take the empty layer and put it on the top again, so the system continues smoothly. Let's have a look again. From the top, the fresh material, and under it, around 1,000 worms doing a great job. 
in the mid layer there is still some not finished proceeded material and um, yeah the last then you can harvest as I already told you this is the system we from warm-up developed in the last year it's a multi-layer system with a diameter of around 40 centimeter it's made out of a specific clay, 100% natural material, which breathes and controls humidity and temperature. So as you see, if we have a look at nature's concepts, we can solve big problems with simple solutions. All you need is some kind of a bin and some worms. So thank you and happy warming.